Hi everyone and welcome to one of my most exciting videos for like the whole year in elementary music. My favorite time to teach elementary music is definitely the holidays because there's just so many fun holiday songs that we can do. But my second favorite time to teach elementary music is probably Hispanic Heritage Month. I love Hispanic Heritage Month and we do it up really, really big in the music room at my school. So today I'm sharing some of my absolute favorite songs that you can use for Hispanic Heritage Month. All of these are in Spanish obviously and we're gonna go starting with like the little kids and then kind of like the second and third graders and then end with some of my favorites for fourth and fifth. Now disclaimer obviously these are not all of the songs in the whole entire world. I actually have a gigantic book it's like this thick of just Hispanic folk songs so obviously it's not everything but this these are a couple of my few it's really hard to pick but a couple of my few that we will go through. So we're going to start with songs that are great for like kindergarten and first grade and then we'll go up from there. So number one is going to be called Los Pollitos. This song is so 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 cute and the added benefit is that a lot of the kids actually know this one because there's a really cute YouTube video about it. So Los Pollitos, the chicks. And so it goes like this and I'll show you our little actions as well. Los Pollitos dicen pio 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 cuando tienen hambre Cuando tienen frío, la gallina busca el maíz al trigo. Les de la comida y las presa abrigo. Bajo de sus almas, acorruchaditos, duermen los pollitos hasta otra día. So this song is really cute. My favorite way to introduce it is just to sing straight through it and I'll do the actions and have the kids kind of guess. So we'll sing through it and then I'll say, okay, so I, you know, at first I said, los pollitos dicen. Hmm. What do you think that means? They're like, oh, talking. I'm like, great. And then I'll, you know, be like, um, cuando tienen hambre. And they're like, oh, they're hungry. And I'm like, yes. And so my whole point being that even if you are, you know, learning something in a different language, talking to someone who speaks a different language, that doesn't mean you can't talk. And that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, still understand things. And so it's really, I love starting with this song because it really just kind of helps the students to understand those things because it is easy to figure those out. I also have a super cute picture book that goes along with this that has like these little pop-ups. You can like pull all these things out. So I will link that down below for you on you on on YouTube. I will link that down below for you on Amazon. It was really cheap and it's like one of my favorite. We use it every single year. Number two is the song El Coqui. So in the fall, I am typically working on high and low. So this song goes in a perfect. And also there's only like one word in the, at least in the chorus. I'm sure there's more words later. But El Coqui, a coqui is a little teeny tiny tree frog that is native to Puerto Rico. And so this little song is so cute and we always use it again for high and low so we trace the melody and it goes Coqui, 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 Kiki, Kiki, Coqui, 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 Kiki, Kiki. Easy, easy, easy peasy. I love it for high and low. We're actually going to do it like next week and I'm very excited to use it again. And there's also a really fun video of a Dora episode where there is a frog singing the song. And so if you can play that on iTunes or if you can play the actual video clip for them, they just think it is like the greatest thing ever. So we usually learn it and then we'll do that as well and show them what the little tiny cookie is. He's so cute. All right, next one. I don't know if this one counts because it's actually a um, American song. It's an African-American song, but it is in Spanish. So I'm gonna include it here, even though it doesn't technically count as a Hispanic song, but it's really cute. And it's called Dulce Dulce. There's a really good recording of Ella Fitzgerald singing this. And it, so this one goes. Dulce, dulce, dulce mama. Dulce, dulce, dulce mamá. Dulce, dulce, dulce chiquicha, 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 chiquicha. So this one's really cute. Dulce means sweet. And so I'm actually going to save this one for a little bit later on in October. And we're going to use it when we are, you know, doing like candy themed everything <laughs> around Halloween. Um, so really cute, really fun. I don't have like anything super amazing to do along with that, but you can work on some intervals. And then I like at the end how it's spoken instead. And so we can play the instruments on that part. And that's a really fun thing to do. 
All right, moving on to second and third grade Hispanic folk songs. So my next one is the one I have been raving about. You're probably so sick of hearing about this song, but I am obsessed and it is called Agua de Limones. This song is so cute, so much fun. We did it at the end of second grade and then we started off the year in third grade with it and it's like the perfect song for the beginning of the year. And then we're gonna pull it back out during Hispanic Heritage Month. So um, let me show you what it is so that you are not confused. Agua de limones goes Agua de limones Vamos a jugar Y el que queda solo Solo quedará So it's a so me la song where we, we used it at the end of second grade to kind of start prepping law and then again we're using it again to work more on law but it has a really fun game. So it literally means um, Agua de limones, water of lemons um, agua de limones. Vamos a jugar. We're going to play. Um, y el que quede solo, so, um, solo, and he who is left over, solo quedará is out. So what you do is we have the we'll sing and the kids walk around and then at the end you call it a category and they have to get in groups based on that category. So like shirt color, how many siblings do you have, favorite color, those kind of things. And if anyone is left over, then they're supposed to be out. Now I did this at the beginning of the year, so we actually didn't do it that way. We just kept playing but they have loved it it was great for the beginning of the year because they actually have to talk to each other to like find out what everyone's favorite color is find out what everyone's favorite animal is and so it worked out really really perfectly and they love it it's so much fun it has quarter rest and it also has law so those are two really good elements you can work on with it and it is just so much fun and also it is a great opportunity to pull in my lucky lemons digital activities so i have a whole lesson plan lesson pack for this it includes like a presentation and digital activities and printable activities and also the lucky lemons digital board game and so this is a really fun board game the printable version is coming but right now we have digital for sure and so so it is super, super cute and it helps the kids learn solfege. So this one that you get with this pack does a law. And so the kids are on Google Slides and they roll the dice and then move their pieces and then each one is linked to a slide in the google slide and they have to do a challenge so they either have to sing a part they have to like fill in a missing note they have to identify what the notes are on the staff and then if they win they get a lemon and then whoever has the most lemons at the end wins so my kiddos have loved that and i am really looking forward to also having the printable version coming out for you soon so i will leave a link down below you can check and when the printable version is available it will also be linked down below all right, the next one is En La Pulga de San Jose. So I love this one. I have a whole video talking about it, so I will link that one down below so that you can check that one out. Um, by the way, I did want to mention I am not a native Spanish speaker, so I do apologize if my Spanish is not perfect. I am trying my best. I do, you know, research and look and try my best. Um, but I do think it's important to include songs in different languages and also to do songs in their native language even if it's not a um, language that you're comfortable with or one that you are really good at. So do some research, look, and when it comes down to it, the kids are either one, not gonna know, or two, if any of them do speak Spanish, you can ask them to help you out. And that's a really great learning opportunity as well. So in La Pulga de San Jose, this one's super cute. It goes, En la pulga de San Jose, yo compré una guitarra, tara, 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 la guitarra. Vaya usted, vaya usted, en la pulga de San Jose, vaya usted, vaya usted, a la pulga de San Jose. A la pulga, not en la pulga, that would be in the, pulga, in the um, market. So this song is talking about going to the market in San Jose and buying different instruments. So you start with the guitar and then you add on and it's a cumulative song. So what we do with this one is we'll sing and we walk around while we sing about going to la pulga. And then when we buy an instrument, then we pretend to play that one. So like, ta -ra -ta -ra -ta -ra la guitarra. And then you add the clarinet and so then it's, um, and it adds on like that so this one is really fun i love to do the movement activity with it we like to look at all the instruments mentioned in the song and listen to each one so we can hear what each one sounds like it has a violin a guitar a clarinet a cello and a drum 
and then I love adding it in with different like instrument themed books so Ada's violin is a great one that's actually a book based in a Hispanic country so and also based in a true story and it's all about making instruments out of recycled materials so that's really cool drum dream girl is a great true story about a um, Cuban girl who became a drummer in a salsa band so that could work just you know anything that goes along with instruments or if you don't want to do a Hispanic book you could do one of my absolute favorites there was a shy fellow who swallowed a cello. It's the best. I will link all of those down below so you can check them out. And I will also link, I have a lesson pack for this one as well. And it has like pretty much everything you need in the Google Slides presentation, including a recording so that you don't have to see it if you don't feel comfortable with Spanish. Um, and the same thing with Agua de Limones, there's a recording of me singing it. So if you don't feel comfortable with the Spanish, you can play it. Or if you just don't want to sing it 70,000 times while they play the game, you can just keep hitting play. All right, my next one is Vamos a la Mar. This one I usually use with third grade this year. I'm also doing it with fourth grade. It is a Guatemalan folk song about going to the ocean, which I love because I just feel like there's so many good ocean songs. So for this one, it goes... Vamos a la mar, tum tum, a comer pescado, tum tum, poca colorada, tum tum, fritito y asado, tum tum. So, vamos a la mar, let's go to the ocean. Um, vamos a la mar, tum tum, a comer pescado, to eat fish. So, basically, we're going fishing. Um, they have colorful mouths, and then the last part, fritito y asado, so fried or grilled. So, basically, we're going to the sea to go fishing and we're gonna eat the fish maybe fried maybe good we shall see so this one's really fun I love it to add some instruments on that like tum tum part that's a really easy way to get them involved especially if they're feeling weird about the Spanish and it's taking a while for them to get that part you can just have them snap on that part play instruments on that part and then I have a couple of different ORF arrangements that I like to do along with this so I will link down below a blog post where I talk about all of those different things and I also love to do this with my ocean animals composition cards which are in Spanish and English and there's now a digital version so you can check those out I'll link them down below again there's gonna be a lot of links Hopefully I hit everything, um, but they are different like composition cards you can move around that are in Spanish and also in English. I have a digital version, a printable version, and also four corners, which is the best. So check those out, check them out, check them out. Um, next one is the song Que Llueva. Sometimes I do use this one with first grade, but it works. It has do in it, which is I think why I stuck it with second and third grade here. Um, but Que Llueva literally means it's raining. And so this song, I'll show you my actions too. You're gonna, sometimes I start doing these things and then I'm like, is it embarrassing that I'm sharing these actions that I made up four years ago with the whole internet? Maybe, whatever. Um, so this song goes, Que llueva, que llueva, la rana esta en la cueva, los pajaritos cantan, la luna se levanta, que si, que no, que caiga un chaparón. So this song is really cute. It's talking about it's raining. So it says it's raining, it's raining. The frog is in his cottage or um, cueva, I think literally means cave. Um, the birds are singing. The silver moon is rising. Yes, yes. No, no, the falling rain is here. So this song is really cute, really easy. And I actually, this is one, I sing it in English first. And then usually the next time I have them, I'll sing it in Spanish. And it's really funny to just start singing and be like, oh great, we're going over the song we did last time. And then start singing it in Spanish. And the kids are like, um, hilarious. It also, since it has the frog, you can pair it with El Coqui. Um, you can pair it with um, Rain, Rain, Go Away. I've used it, I have a really fun improvisation activity where we use the word rain and llueva to create all sorts of different patterns. So that's a lot of fun. Um, especially when you get the egg shakers out or you can even get the rain sticks out. It's a great time. So any of those things, super, super fun. Love it, great time. Um, I think I have a whole blog post about Que Llueva, so I will link that down below. All right, next up is a Puerto Rican lullaby, and that is called Duerme Mi Tesoro, which literally means um, sleep my treasure. So this song goes, Duerme mi tesoro, duerme mi bien, que los angelitos te miran también. So this song has a half note and 
also has loft, so you could work on either of those. I usually use, I was just looking at it and I was like, why are we not planning to do this in second grade this year? Because I normally do. It's because it's half note and because of COVID we're behind. And so we're not at half note. We're usually at half note by this point, but we are not there yet and it's okay. Um, so this one's really, really cute. It means um, sleep my treasure, sleep my bien good, sleep my good. Um, so that the angels will see you as well so super cute little song i love this especially for like a calming down song it's always nice to have a nice calming down song you know after we're up doing all the crazy things so that we can just kind of chill out a little bit so super cute super simple i don't have anything like amazing to do with that other than you know just singing it. all right next up is fourth and fifth grade songs so the first one is Las Mañanitas. This song is typically used as a birthday song and it's, it's just a really good one. I did a really fun arrangement of this in choir in college and I just like loved it. I'm not gonna sing the whole thing because it's kind of long, but I'll sing kind of like the first part of what I would do with my students. I'm not using this one this year, but I have in the past. Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba David a las muchachas bonitas se las cantamos aquí. Despierta mi bien, despierta, mira que amaneció y a los pajarillos cantan la luna ya se metió like running out of breath on that one um so that's the whole first part of it and that's pretty much all i have ever done with my kiddos um and for this one i it's really interesting to like compare and contrast it to our birthday song this one's much more complicated than the u.s birthday song which i kind of appreciate um and then also there's a lot of really good mariachi versions of this so you can talk about mariachi music watch some videos of mariachi um pair it with a dance like the mexican hat dance so those are all really good i guess um the next one's actually a chant and this one is has been a hit i tried it for the first time last school year and the kids love it so it goes a la lata a la tero a la hija de chocolatero a la lima a limon a la hija de Don Simon. Let me say that slower so you can hear the words better. A la lata, a la tero, a la hija de chocolatero. A la lima, a limon, a la hija de Don Simon. So that means, um, um, so really, really super cute. So really, really simple. And for this one, you, it's like a jumping thing. So you start and it's, um, right, right right left right so a la lata a la tero a la hija de chocolatero and then we usually go back the opposite way so we'll do left 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 right left and then what's really fun is if you can get them in a circle and doing it that way which can be a little bit dangerous because kids are probably going to run into each other because rights and lefts you know um but it's really good and then you can do it with a like beat passing game so if you use like little you know rocks or stones or bean bags or whatever and you can do the same thing a la lata a la tero a la hija and then you keep it de chocolatero so it changes the pattern and then if anyone messes up the pattern then they would be out there's a really good video on YouTube of some students who are Hispanic doing it. And so I will link that down below so you can kind of see like how it works with all the kids. I had someone ask me recently, by the way, if I like, they were like, it'd be so helpful if we could see your students, you know, performing some of this stuff instead of just you talking about it. Um, that would be cool, but it would also be like a huge violation of everything. And so I'm not going to be including that because I try to keep my students, you know, like separate and off of all of the cameras so they... First of all, because FERPA. Secondly, just because I, I, that feels kind of icky to me. So we're not going to do that. Um, and the last one is one of my favorites. And that is called Al Citron. This song is so much fun. It is a beat passing game. I am so mad that with COVID, we are not supposed to be like passing things right now. Because this is my favorite. It's my, I love it. I'm obsessed. Um, we usually do it every year. But Al Citron goes... Al citron de un fandango, sango, sango, sabare, sabare de la rondela con su triqui, triqui tron. It's so much fun. The kids love that it's like pretty much all nonsense words and they just think it's hilarious because they're rather funny because like triqui, triqui tron and they're just like 
you know. Um, I find if you can make it kind of, you know, fun like that, then they always love it. And then this is a beat passing game. And so you do, you just pass, pass. And then at the end, it's tricky, tricky, tron. And again, whoever messes up the pattern would then be out. So similar kind of vibe to Alata, but a little bit less complicated because it's just, you know, pass, pass, pass. And then the very end is when that happens. Um, so much fun. We did do this online last year. And for that one, we just did tap slide so we would do an asitron tebun fandango sango sango sabare sabare de la rondela con su triki triki tron so we did pass slide and then we did tap 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 and that was the thing that you had to work to make sure that you got right and then along with that you can pair that with the cup routine which you can do to literally any song so then you can do the cup routine and you can do the cup routine with other hispanic songs you could do like more modern hispanic songs so that would be great um i have tons more I, even as i'm doing i'm like oh we didn't talk about brinca la tabrita and i'm like oh we didn't talk about this one oh we didn't talk about this one but you know you gotta stop somewhere <laughs> so maybe next year there will be a part two but for now that is some of my favorite hispanic folk songs that you can use with your kiddos hopefully that was helpful i would love to know your favorite one so let me know down in the comments what is your favorite hispanic heritage month song to do with your kiddos and little plug like i usually do just because they are Hispanic does not mean you can only do them at this time of the year, but really should be incorporating them all year long. I do incorporate them all year long and I just kind of make like an extra effort during Hispanic Heritage Month. I think that's kind of the right mentality to do, just like extra effort to make sure we're really emphasizing it. And then again, we do them all year round. At least where I live in the US, we have a lot of Spanish speakers. So even though not many of my kids are Hispanic, it's helpful to um, pull in those things so that when they meet, you know, other is when the, my kids even though they're not hispanic meet hispanic kids because we have a lot here then they have that so my camera is about to turn off so i'm gonna leave it there thanks so much for watching and i will see you next time